Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Jennifer Wakeman. Our first story on this episode takes us all the way to Millmont in Catania Folk Instruments. In 1988, Steve Catania and his wife Tammy wanted to escape life in the big city. When they found the perfect house outside of Millmont, the couple took a leap of faith and decided to move from their home in Philadelphia, even though neither one of them had a job lined up. We had about another week before we were going to move and she approached her boss about starting a branch office up here of Children's Choice, which was a foster care agency that took care of medically needy kids. Both Tammy and Steve were licensed social workers and they established the Children's Choice location in Union County. Woodworking had always been a hobby for Steve and their new home provided a perfect location for a shop. I had built guitars. I went to Nashville and learned how to make guitars and I did that just as a hobby. And when I came up here and saw this building right away, I turned it into a wood shop and, and as we were doing the social work, I came out here and just fooled around and made some instruments. With a minor in business administration, Tammy was able to see the potential in Steve's woodworking. She was a business minor, so she knew a lot about business. I didn't know that much, but I did know how to make things. Mm -hmm. So between the two of us, it was a good team. They started selling various instruments at local craft shows. There was, a, there was a good two or three years there where just about every other weekend we were loading up the van and going to a different show and that got old very quickly. Then Tammy got them into the New York gift show where buyers from all over the world could see Steve's creations. So it was all the pennies we could scrape together to go do that show and we thought, oh, are we making this big mistake? But that was actually what launched this business. A buyer placed an order for 3,000 of Steve's cat paws. That one order changed their business forever. And I was used to going to little local craft shows and selling two or three at a, a, tour, a day, you know, right, right. <laughs> you know, standing on the street corner. But that changed our whole business, and uh, we went from being a retail business to a wholesale company. And now that's what we've been doing all these years. It was a totally different way to sell. I mean, here people are coming here specifically with with their order forms to write orders. I mean, they're they're there to sell and. That, first we, when we first saw that, we thought this is where we need to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started to apply to wholesale shows and got into a few and it's, it was a whole juried system. We had to send photographs in and, and get juried into these shows. But once we were locked into those, it was, it was great. There was no more loading up the van with all of the stuff that you're going to sell because at the wholesale shows you just bring samples of right, things and then right. you just take orders. So with the large orders came lots of work and the Catanias and their staff worked hard. Yeah, when, when we first started out, I mean it wasn't, oh, it, it, we worked pretty hard. We were out here sometimes until 11 o'clock at night. I was cutting out cat paws on the bandsaw right. and then wake up at 6.30 the next morning and do it all over again. Over the years, Steve has made a variety of instruments, but he quickly developed a very simple goal. Oh, is to make an instrument that's easy to play, it's comfortable to hold, it's very durable because we were selling to a lot of kids too. And, um, and that's how all these instruments sort of evolved. Today, Catania Folk Instruments produces cat paws, fish sticks, gourd pianos, and board pianos. Designing and creating each of these instruments took a lot of research and development. The cat paws were actually the very first musical instrument I ever made. I probably had 30 different designs of this before I came to this final design. Once Steve had his design, he stuck with it. This has been the same shape, actually the same template that we use to trace these every day. I think it says 1992 on it. We've been using the same template. They start out just a solid block of wood like this, and then we, we trace them so we get the most efficient use of the wood. Uh, we drill a little hole in them, and then we cut them out. And I'll show you how that works.
After the initial cut is made, another template is used and another cut is made to get the final shape. And then I can cut that part out. And that's the final cutting shape. Steve gave us a demonstration of how the cat paws are played. They're played like the old time spoons. They sound like that. And it's very easy, you just sort of hold your hand above and you tap up and down. And then to get that roll, you spread apart your fingers and you just drag it along your fingers. It's very easy, just those two parts, and then you can mix those two parts together. And make music. <laughs> well, that doesn't look too hard, does it? Oh, it is easier it's than easy. you think it is. That's cool. And how do you, which way do you run it? This, this way? Yeah, this just way? keep your fingers spread nice and far apart. Keep them stiff. Stick them on a picket fence. You want to hit each other. There you go. And let it hit your leg, and you'll get a good... <laughs> I'm a wuss. There you go. There you go. That's it. And then you can just flip your hand over. Oh, well, that's not You're hard. on your way down. No. <laughs> not as good as that, but it's not as hard as he made it than us. I thought it would be. But spoons are really hard. Like, I've, you know, I've gone to camp and yeah. people can do it. And you sit there and you've got two spoons. You're whacking them. The spoons are falling all over the plate. The fish sticks are made and played in much the same way. The fish sticks, um, I developed this product because after cutting all these lengths, I'd get to the end of the board and then I'd have you know, a little bit of the board left over, which wasn't enough, wasn't long enough to make the cat paws. So I came up with a shorter version to use up all my scrap wood and just marketed them to kids. Made a little fish shape and... Sounds like that. Both the cat paws and fish sticks are made from Pennsylvania cherry wood. For the board pianos, Steve uses many different types of wood, from cherry and walnut to paduke a red colored wood imported from Africa. Steve showed us how he creates the decorative board pianos by gluing several types of wood together and then slicing them on the bandsaw. This will get run through the sander and smoothed all down. And then we trace out the little shapes and cut them out on the bandsaw, another little bandsaw over there. And Deb will sand them all up and now she's ready to put all these bridges on. These need to all be glued on. Deb Rotomola is the third member of the Catania Folk Instruments team. She showed us how the bridges are attached to the board pianos. The, the yellow wood for the bridges, they, that wood comes from Mexico. It's a wood called Paul Amarillo. And um, I just love the color of it. It's nice and bright. Uh, but we make all the bridges ourselves. We, we run them through our planer, which has a molder on it, which um, I cut the thin strips of wood and then I run it through the planer and it gives it that shape on the top. Like the cat paws, Steve designed the instrument and has stayed with that design through the years. When we first started, we got a lot of orders very quickly. So I got the design part out of the way pretty quickly. I came up with something I liked and then we just start, we just ran with it. And this is the same design I have been using for 23 years. Wow, that's <laughs> so great. Now we, during the course of those 23 years, we have come up with a lot of different designs and we've made many other instruments. We've made stri stringed instruments. Um, I made a lot of mandolins out of gourds. Uh, we used to make a lot of drums mm -hmm. um, out of bamboo and different types of instruments. Uh, but these days, this is w what's really selling. Once the bridges are in place and the wood is oiled, the steel keys have to be attached. We buy all of our steel in big uh, 
hundred pound mm -hmm. rolls. Wow. And then we have a local guy that cuts them for us and then we send them out to get them plated and then we sort them all and put them in these and this is what Deb does. She'll put all the keys onto the instruments and then she'll tune them up with an electronic tuner. Much to my surprise, the board pianos have a rich, full sound. Finding the right spring steel was key to the board piano's sound. I tried probably 20 different varieties of steel before I came upon this stuff, and right away, it was night and day, it was like, oh, here, this is what it's supposed to sound like. Gourd pianos are also very popular. As with all of his other raw materials, Steve searched high and low for just the right gourd. We ordered gourds from every gourd farmer there was, from the East Coast to the West Coast, and some of the ones on the East Coast, if you get gourds from the East Coast, they're thinner, they don't have enough of a growing season, a long enough growing season. Um, all, then we settled on this company and uh, they've got 800 acres, they do nothing but grow gourds. And um, they, they're out of, right outside of San Diego. So they had a nice long growing season and the gourds are extremely thick. Um, this is unusual for a gourd to be this thick. Usually they're, they're very thin and kind of flimsy. And once I saw these, there was no question in my mind, this is, these are the ones I was going to use because they're indestructible. So they come whole? They come like this. And yep. And then we slice them open. And then you have to kind of clean them out. They have all the, the stuff. There's seeds and stuff inside. And we clean them out. And then we, we sand them flat. Mm -hmm. And I can show you how I glue them up if you like. That'd be great. Here comes some high-tech stuff. This is that African wood. and. These are the little uh, T-nuts, they're called, that holds the bridges. But to glue them up, uh, we cut them out, get one of these hollowed out gourds, just apply a little glue to the rim. Spread out the glue a little bit. And they're all numbered because all the tops have to be cut to the exact shape of the gourd because each gourd is different. So uh, every gourd is numbered uh, according to the top. Stick it on there, spread the glue a little bit. So you can see this fits exactly the shape of the gourd. Then, very high tech, I use the rubber bands to Put a few on and then I just make sure that it's exactly on there. That's all there is to it. Now obviously I was kidding about the high tech part, but that's the way Steve likes it. We do things pretty primitively. I mean I'm still gluing things up with rubber bands and mm -hmm. Uh, because that's the fastest and most efficient way to do things, but um, we don't have a lot of high-tech equipment. We don't have any CNC routers or any, any of the high-tech woodworking equipment that most shops do these days. Um, we still do it the same way we did 25 years ago, and it seems to be working, so right. we, we haven't changed it. The glue dries in about an hour, and then the gourds are sanded and get bridges and keys just like the board pianos. The keys on the gourd and the board pianos are set up in the same way. They are tuned to the key of C, and we'll let Steve explain the rest. The way it's set up, this is C, middle C on the piano, and then you alternate your thumbs working your way out to the end. So it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. They've even developed a simple system for playing the pianos that doesn't involve having to read music. We have a little instruction booklet that comes with it and with a very simple numbering system. And our whole idea is to get anybody to play these things, kids and mm -hmm. any kid who, any kid above six or seven years old who can tell their right from their left and numbers mm -hmm. and are able to read the little booklet are able to play a dozen songs right off the bat, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Steve still tinkers around in his shop and creates new instruments from time to time. Our favorite was the electric kalimba. We were so intrigued, we made him pull out an amp and demonstrate. 
So you just plug it in just like a regular guitar. Now these are tuned to a pentatonic scale, so there are no wrong notes. Around the year 2000, the Catanias decided to slow down their production. They continue to service all of their current customers but aren't on the hunt for any new business. Many of their customers have been with them for nearly 20 years. I think the customers really appreciate the, the fact that they're going to get a consistent instrument. When they order it in May and then they order it again in September, it's going to look exactly the same. It's going to be the same quality. The Catanias are happy with the pace of their business at this point in their lives. After working hard for more than a decade, it's time to enjoy the fruits of their labors. Oh, if we advertised, we could, you know, I'd have to build another building. And I mean, the, the, wow. the, the orders are out there, but we, try, we like to, you know, so keep it at this level. Yeah. It's intentional that you're yes. at a level yes. that you can exactly. maintain. Yeah. You have, you're making whatever we, you want to We make. all have hobbies. Deb loves to garden, and she's got four kids at home so and I certainly have my hobbies that I like to go out and do so I don't want to be stuck in here for 10 hours a day five days a week so I mean we we work fast and got our work done and then we were able to do what we like to do 24 years ago Steve and Tammy Catania took a leap of faith today they can look back at that decision to leave Philadelphia and know it was the right one but I never regretted making this move I mean I know that my mom's ready to hang me because I didn't <laughs> become a professional with a coat and tie, but this is really what I love to do. Today, Catania Folk Instruments are sold around the world. We've got instruments all over the world. We have a, uh, a company in France, a company in Canada, a company in China um, that we ship all these to, and then they distribute them in their countries. Musical instrument manufacturing, right here in your neighborhood. You can buy cat paws, fish sticks, board, and gourd pianos locally at the Natural Food and Garden Store on Route 45 west of Lewisburg. Coming up just after the break, I'm twisting myself in knots, so stay tuned.